Hey everybody, it's Matthew, your favorite leader of the VA. Today we're reviewing the finale of Imposter Syndrome. Joining me are Jared, Hammer Brother, Paper Hammer Brother, Joe Critter, Kevin White, Spear Guy, Bob, Wooly, Jeff, Dak, Sword Union 99, Paul Snoop, and Bojangles! Where's it's like Corpius, George, and Lancer. I see the strings attached to the evil straddling while his own creations are pulling him towards his own doom. Hopefully the villain justice will prevail in issue 50. You know you didn't have to interrupt Jangles. That last spot was safe for Jimbo. Jimbo told me he wanted a break because of our VA Lord planning and giving us over joint special exercise. Okay. You're in, Bojangles. Show us what you got. Thank you for reading there, Matthew. I hope not to disappoint a wonderful human and monsters like you. Jangles devotion, my swagger side. We begin with a flashback to the metal virus debacle that should have been solved with a simple patch. I shall I'm not taking matters into his own hands, but return the dust text friend is on my back in line. So I decides to ask his eventual former idol a question, which is white box. Eggman replies that he likes them, but Sterling says they're not removed with radical and the time users could be used more economically. Eggman tells Sterling he doesn't settle for just the world which he's conquered it. He wants to make it what he wants to be, a saying if he wants it. And he has asked moments to be cousin as he can climb the candy man of Trillium. It'll what it's what will happen. I mean to think Eggman land to celebrate a music park. John says it's worse to live by before we cut back to the present where John remarks is not really inspiring after all that has happened. The doc announces that tonight is the night that his new era will not have the Eggman and Sonic battles the VA is used to, but a new narrative where he's the Eggman while searching Kit or Sonic and Tails, which would please the AK Eggman fan base. He asks Search and Kit if they're ready to go with the danger. Yes, while well, Search makes a search like gesture. So I'd be confessing his trick horse. Starline and his freaks begin their assault on Angle Tropolis, busting out cluckers and the coconuts, which should have had the Lost World models ready, along with all the others, which attempts to attack Search, but he uses his water tender to back the monkey pen and destroying it. After Sterling's creations destroy an egg hammer with teamwork, he tells Serge and Kit to keep the other bindings busy while establishing the override program that will later have been issued war not. Kit later tells Serge that they must make enough of distractions so that Eggman doesn't realize his systems are compromised. Serge agrees with Kit's plan, issues with their father's side, and tells him to grab on while they do some damage. Kit asks Serge if it's cool to use Starline's own plan against him, and she replies that every deed they do is justified, even telling him that the only person Kit's got to be loyal to is Serge herself while they come across a giant grinder and a buzz bomber. Meanwhile, after Serge destroys the giant grinder by using Kit as a shuriken, Orban and Cubot return from their vacation while the doctor asks them where they've been after the quasi badnik experiments. Cubot tries to explain the vacation, but Orban butts in and tells them they did reconnaissance. Though Dr. Eggman doubts their story, he tells them to lock back into the network because the reports that Sonic and Tails are making them as an Egotropolis. Orban says that the battle data matches Sonic and Tails, but it's not them since the details are incongruent. When Eggman asks what he's talking about, Orbot pulls up a visual showing Surge and Kitling is back down on a Caterpillar and an Anton. Eggman asks who they are, and Orbot tells them that they're not on file, while the security algorithms can't agree if they are Sonic and Tails or not Sonic and Tails. The doc says what's important is that their ranking is banding, but he has the perfect thing to deal with, e deal with evil do-gooders like them. Surge asks this is the best Eggman can offer, saying the only reason Sonic isn't truly really one is because he hasn't fully really killed him. Suddenly, a burst of speed snatches Surge, revealing itself to be Metal Sonic, much of the fake Sonic's delight. Search and Metal Sonic do get out with Eggman's number one batting initially having the upper hand even blocking a spin dash with his trusty back shield. Search demands that Kit supports her in the battle and Metal lunges at her. Search and Metal Sonic are handlocked while Search lays out the reasons why Metal Sonic will never be the real Sonic, saying he, that he doesn't have the heart and soul, probably Metal to punch Search in the stomach and about to lay another hit until Kit's water tender to the song. Search lays another reason why Metal Sonic will never be the real Sonic, namely that he doesn't have the backup. He swings Kit around, though Serge dodges and hits him with a spin dash. Metal Air tries to attack Serge again, though Kit catches him and drowns him on Serge's orders. This does not look good. Serge later plays Lightstruck Smackdown, sword circuiting Eggman's top enforcer and telling him that he'll never be Sonic since she's going to replace him and that Metal Sonic isn't even good enough to be our fake. Where have I heard that before? You're not even good enough to be I'll my I'll make you eat those words! Serge asks Kit if his head is okay, and Kit says he's fine and was happy to help in any way, much to Serge's delight, saying they're going to get along just fine. Eggman expresses anger at Metal Sonic being defeated, as well as Serge's unsportsmanlike gloating. So, while Sonic's victories were bad enough for video game villain kind, he at least had the decency of showing respect. Cubot informs Eggman that he knows to wear the login, which turns out to be Dr. Starline, who smugly asks him if 
he's surprised by his return. Eggman tells Starling that he's not surprised about his return, and that he's supposed to come back bowing and scraping for doing the assassin, but angrily asks him what he's doing, and Starling states that he's surpassing him by unleashing a signal which brainwashes various bindings like Carlton's, Flashers, Monobone, and Coconuts. Of course, the Carlton's deserve the Lost World models, right, boss? They certainly do, Deck. Back to the story at hand, or Brown Cubata brainwashed as well, saying Eggman is confined to his old quarters, but the extra is great to excellent and has to give her devices in an escape road and gets away clean. Meanwhile, Doc Starline is carried by many brainwashed egg ponds with a few buzz bombers, and Surge asks as if it's everything he hoped it would be. Starline replies his bare feet, but they've only begun, and his run of power awaits. Eggman Lords, Bowser, Matthew, Storms were better. Starline is welcomed by the brainwashed Orban Cubot and Moribond to salute him. Orbot welcomes the usurper and says his wish is their command. Starling commands Orbot to transmit the override code across the entire Ignat and bring every binding to him in his empire, knowing that Sonic would see Ignat's strings of scheming and would show up to cut them, though they would be confronted and replaced by his creation, still unaware that Surgeon Kit are still pulling his strings until they kill him. Starling boasts that his way, via patience planning and preparation with every variable accounted for and controlled, is way, way better than Eggman's way, with his meal tonight being victory. Starling asks what happened to Cubot, and he replies that Eggman squashed it before he escaped. Starling asks where his former idol escaped, and Orbot says Eggman went through its personal suit to the moral crotch, though to just play his and finish it. Starling believes it will be perfectly manageable thanks to his previous plan to say that whatever mech he uses will be taken over once it's online, and order them to send a bounty detachment to gently take him in the cuss. Eggman sees the Death Egg Robot, Egg Emperor, Egg Dragoon, and the Egg Robo from the Lost Hex Operation, saying he thought he had time to refurbish all of these, but says this will not have to do via offline control. Kit sees the various amount of bandings like Buzz Bombers, Buzzers, Turtloids, and Batbots, saying an incredible number was searched, saying she could take them down. Once Agent Kit smokes Starline and the others, Kit will program all or half of the bandings to self-destruct while she smashes the others, but they'll figure it out. Kit asks how they will handle Sonic, and Surge says she handles Sonic while Kit handles tails. Kit is uncertain of the idea, but Surge reminds him that if Sonic comes in solo, they can handle him like Metal Sonic, but if Tails is in tow, Kit keeps him from distracting Surge. After the heroes and doctors are defeated, they can hunt down all their friends and tumble every city, turn down all of Sonic's world. Kit replies he can't wait while Surge acts. If it sounds good, send stage for the fate of the Eggman Empire. Well, this is something for the books. I give this issue an 8.9 out of 10, seeing that while it's nice to see other bandings like Batbots, Cluckers, Coconuts, Coltons, and Turtloids again certainly should know better than to usurp the Eggman Empire. As T'Challa said to Eric Killmonger, Power on hand can be a very volatile force, cousin. It will get the best of you eventually, on your plane or on ours. This has been VA Reviews. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. This video has been brought to you by Models Resources on Gloss World Banding Sections, both Wii U and 3DS. If they can actually get revived there, it would be a godsend. See you next time, folks.